Welcome to Goop Tales, episode 66, Hogger and the Bee Eaters of Uganda. Young Hogger was so very funny. He could change your mood from dark to sunny. He almost always had a smile that was sure to leave you happy for a while. But oh, how he loved to hog lots of stuff. He was always afraid he wouldn't get enough. Chapter One Once upon a time, there was a most amusing young goop boy called Hogger. Hogger had such an amiable personality that you couldn't help but love him. He was always full of fun and laughter, (laughs) and just being around him would lighten the mood. Hogger could walk into a room full of goops that were upset because Miss Wigglebutt had just told them they had to learn 50 new, very challenging spelling words. And he could turn the whole situation upside down. Let's make a game out of it. Come on, it'll be fun. I will start. Let's see, what's the first word? Wolf. Wolf? W-O-L-F? Hmm. Do you think she means wolf like a dog or wolf like the animal? He would ask with a laugh. (laughs) And all of the rest of the goops would start laughing with him. (laughs) Wolf. Oh, yes, there is an L. Just remember that wolves like to lick and to lie down. He would make up tricks for each word and the goops loved it. Hogger had a knack for making others feel good about themselves. Once all the goops were playing hide-and-seek, and and very vain was it. But while she was searching for Nevershare, she found a mirror on the ground and couldn't stop staring at it. She stared for so long that everyone else began to grow impatient while hiding. Hogger spotted her from his hiding spot and he called out, Very vain, you are so beautiful, and we can't wait for you to find all of us so that we can admire your beauty. Then he popped back into his hiding spot and disappeared. Very vain immediately dropped the mirror and set off to find her admirers in hiding. It was this sort of behavior that endeared Hogger to just about everyone. But there were occasions when no one wanted to be anywhere near Hogger. Hogger was known to be a hog. Hogger had a fear that there wasn't enough. Enough toys, enough food, or even enough toilet paper. So he liked to hog things even when there was more than enough. He even carried around a little butterfly net to scoop things up with. Once Hogger was playing in a big, beautiful swimming pool with his goop friends, there were plenty of rafts floating around in the water. But Hogger decided he needed more than one raft. He stacked up three of the rafts and dragged them to the top of the pool slide and then hopped on top and started down the slide on top of three rafts. The rafts were piled very high, and almost immediately, Hogger flew off of them into the water, narrowly missing the edge of the swimming pool. Hogger, you really shouldn't need to hog all the rafts. You almost hurt yourself for being such a hog, called out Shouteen from across the water. Hogger just climbed out of the pool and trotted away unfazed. One very, very foggy day in Goop World, Hogger invited Brigetta over for hot chocolate. He asked her to bring some marshmallows as he was running low. It was the sort of day that was gray and misty outside, and all he wanted to do was be warm and cozy inside. Forgetta arrived shortly after noon, and gave Hogger a huge hug. Hello, Hogger. I'm so happy to be here and have hot chocolate with you. It's awfully gloomy outside, and you always make me feel better, Forgetta said. 
Hogger smiled and asked, Did you bring the marshmallows? Oh, I forgot, said Forgetta with a sigh. Hmm, well, that isn't good. I don't think I have enough, said a concerned Hogger. Well, I'm sure we can make do, replied Forgetta. Hogger just stared at her in disbelief. Make do, he thought to himself as he led her into the library. Hogger's house had the most magnificent library. Three of the walls were lined with books from floor to ceiling, and they were all arranged by category. Oh, Hogger, I forgot how beautiful your library is, gasped Forgetta as she looked around at all the books. It is a dream. Thanks. I do love it. Now, come on and have some hot chocolate. Hogger's mother had set out a tray with two mugs of hot chocolate and a small bowl of marshmallows. Forgetta sat down and picked up a mug of cocoa and then reached for a marshmallow. But before she could even pick one up, Hogger swooped up the bowl of marshmallows and dumped all of them into his hot chocolate. There's only enough for me, he said as he eyed Forgetta. Okay, no worries. I'll just forget about them, laughed Forgetta as she sipped at her cocoa. Hogger's mug was stuffed with marshmallows. There were so many that he couldn't even see any cocoa. He lifted it to his mouth to take a sip, but the hot chocolate couldn't make it through the wall of marshmallows. So he put his head even closer to the marshmallows, and with a funny little sucking sound, Hogger disappeared right into his mug. Forgetta watched in astonishment as he was devoured by marshmallows. Chapter 2 Everything felt soft and squishy. Maybe I'm on a marshmallow cloud, Hogger thought to himself. With his eyes closed, he reached out to grab a handful of marshmallows and put them in his mouth. You disgusting, he shouted as he spat out a mouthful of mud. Upon opening his eyes, Hogger found that he was sitting in a mud pit without a marshmallow in sight. There was a strange sound coming from the water, and Hogger stood up to see a pod of hippopotamuses in the middle of the mud pit. They were milling about and hadn't yet spotted him so he decided it was time to make a quick and silent exit from the mud pit. He remembered hearing from Messalina that hippopotamuses were extremely dangerous and that, in fact, they were the deadliest land mammal in the world. He didn't want to wait to find out firsthand. As Hogger distanced himself from the mud pit, he found himself in a whole new world. The landscape was vast and green, and the skies were broad and seemingly endless. He was reminded of somewhere, but he just wasn't sure exactly where. I should have paid more attention in Miss Wigglebutt's geography class. Then maybe I would know where I am, he sighed aloud. Well, I can tell you that. You're in Uganda, sir, said the sweetest little voice. Hogger looked around and saw a small antelope. She smiled largely and her brown eyes shone with pride as she said, I'm an Uganda cob, the national animal of Uganda. My name is Namizi. I'm out with my herd, but I saw you and I wanted to come and see what you were. What I am? Um, I'm a goop, and my name is Hogger. Namizi let out a little giggle. <laughs> I like you. You're funny. I've never heard my parents speak about goops. What kind of animal are you? She asked. I'm not an animal. I'm a goop. I don't think your parents would speak about goops. We don't live in Uganda. We live in goop world. Well, this is my first time out with the herd. So I still have a lot to learn, said Namizi. Where is your herd? asked Hogger as he looked around. Namizi turned and scanned the landscape. 
there wasn't a trace of her herd. Her heart began to race as she remembered her parents' warnings to never wander from the herd. I don't know, she said, turning to Hogger. Maybe I can stay with you for now? Of course, said Hogger. We can keep each other company. So Hogger and Namizi set out into the plains of Uganda. As they ambled along, Hogger told Namizi all about Goop World and his friend Forgetta and the hot chocolate and marshmallows they loved. I've never heard of cocoa and marshmallows and hot chocolate, but it all sounds wonderful, sighed Namizi. The sun began to set as they approached an enormous tea plantation. It was a green field of tea leaves that went on and on as the orange sun spread over it. The two of them stopped to admire the view together. As they stood in silence, Hogger could sense Namizi stiffen. Then her ears pricked up and she held her head high. Something was wrong. Quick, follow me, whispered Namizi as she headed silently into the tea plantation. Hogger's breath quickened and his heart raced. He didn't know why, but he knew he trusted Namizi and her instincts. Together, they made their way deep into the plantation until they were hidden in tea leaves. At the edge of the plantation, a herd of hyenas were howling as they passed by the spot that Hogger had been standing in just minutes before. How did you know they were coming? He whispered to Namizi. She just smiled at him. Then there was silence. The hyenas had moved on, and the two of them were alone again. Hogger looked up at the navy sky, dotted with sparkling stars, as his heart rate returned to normal. He was in a whole new world now, and he realized how lucky he was to have Namizi with him. Uganda was not a place to venture alone. He made a little bed in the tea leaves and lay down and closed his eyes. The day had exhausted him. Namizi couldn't sleep. She stood up and watched as the hyena pack disappeared into the far-off distance. And then, just as she was about to lay down near Hogger, Namizi pricked her ears again and darted her eyes. There was a rustling sound at the edge of the plantation. Chapter 3 Namizi stood still and turned her head in the direction of the rustling. Then she lifted her nose high into the air trying to pick up a scent. The rustling sound was coming closer. Namizi wasn't sure what to do. At this point, she normally would have fled, but she glanced down at the sleeping hogger and knew that she couldn't leave him. Suddenly, the rustling stopped, and there was a moment of silence, followed by an unfamiliar crying sound. Hogger woke up and blurted out, Who's crying? What is that noise? Namizi stared at him in disbelief. He had just given them away. There was another moment of silence that was interrupted by the rustling sound again. And from the tea leaves emerged a baby gorilla. She was crying. Hogger and Namizi stared at each other, and then they both looked at the baby gorilla, who continued to cry and wipe her tears. No one knew what to do next. So Hogger did what he did best. He changed the mood. He stepped towards the baby gorilla, let out a huge grin, and clapped his hands. I've always wanted to meet a baby gorilla, and you are definitely the most charming gorilla I've ever seen, and the first one I've met, he said as he made a little bow. The gorilla was so surprised by Hogger that she forgot to cry, and instead she smiled. Then she began to move her hands about as if she were trying to communicate with Hogger. What is she doing? asked Hogger as he turned to look at Namizi. She's signing. She speaks in sign language. She said you are sweet and nice and she wants to pick you up. Oh, and her name is Sanyu. 
which means joy. She thinks you are cute like a little doll. And just like that, before Hogger could object, Sanyu reached down and picked him up. She held him with one hand, and he felt very tiny and a wee bit scared. The three of them camped in the middle of the tree plantation and decided to wait until dawn before moving anywhere. Sanyu signed to them that she had been separated from her family and she was in search of them. She had the same story as Namizi. They were two babies separated from their families. They both agreed it wasn't safe for them to be out in the wild of Uganda alone. We will take care of each other until we all get home, declared Hogger, trying to lighten the mood. Sanyu and Namizi looked at him and nodded, and then they all fell asleep. Hogger slept in the palm of Sanyu's hand. If danger came during the night, they were counting on Namizi to hear or smell it before it was too late. Daylight came and dawn broke over the tea plantation. We need to make a plan. We have to figure out a way for everyone to get back home, said Hogger. Sanyu started signing. What is she saying? asked Hogger, looking at Namizi. She's saying that the tea leaves can show us the way if we know how to read them. Sanyu then explained to them how her family had been using tea leaves for years. First, you picked a handful of leaves and made an intention. Then you cleared a spot on the ground and let the leaves fall and land below. The final step was to read the story told by the leaves. Sanyu was sure she would be able to read the tea leaves. It would be her first time, but she had watched her mother do it many times. So Hogger, Sanyu, and Namizi each gathered a handful of leaves. Hogger's was the largest, and they dropped them on the ground. Sanyu started with Namizi's pile. Namizi's intention had been to find her family. Sanyu signed the message of the leaves. The leaves say that I am to head east at sundown, Namizi said with a smile. Sanyu continued on reading her own leaves. Sanyu must wait until nightfall and then leave the tea plantation and head south until she finds a river and then she must cross the river, Namizi translated. And me? Hogger asked eagerly. Sanyu looked down at the leaves. There were so many. And then back at Hogger, with a strange look on her face. What? What is it? asked Hogger. Then Sanyu signed. She said, you must be chased by a thousand bees, said Namizi, with a horrified look on her face. Chapter 4. Hogger couldn't believe what he was hearing. He looked at Sanyu in disbelief. You must have read those leaves incorrectly, he said with panic. Now he wished he hadn't taken so many. Sanyu cocked her head and shook her finger, and then looked back down at the leaves, carefully studying them. Then she began to sign again. Namizi watched her closely and said, you're right, she did misread them. Hogger sighed with relief. <gasps> she said she forgot the part that says you must be chased by a thousand bees by high noon today, said Namizi. This was even worse news. But how and why? I don't even understand this. I hardly have any time, exclaimed Hogger. Sanyu signed again and Namizi translated. She says, it isn't for you to understand. It's only for you to do. And next time, maybe don't take so many leaves. Hogger walked over to Sanyu and gave her a hug. She hugged him back. Then he hugged Namizi and started out of the plantation. Wait, where are you going? Called out Namizi. I don't know. I guess I will go look for bees. What else can I do? He sighed. Wait, wait, we can help you, said Namizi. 
as she looked at Sanyu, who nodded back at her. Then Sanyu began signing, and Namizi nodded her head and made mental notes. The two of them didn't stop signing and nodding for at least a minute, and then Namizi turned to Hogger and said, We have a plan for you. Hogger listened as Namizi told him about a bee colony that wasn't too far from the tea plantation. It was a large colony with lots of honey hives. The plan was that Hogger would go to the colony and disturb the bees and get them worked up to an angry state by stealing a honey hive. The bees would chase him, but he would hop on to Namizi's back and she would take him to a mud wall of bee eaters. A, a mud wall of what? interrupted Hogger. Namizi continued, calmly explaining that bee eaters were a type of small, colorful birds that ate bees and other insects. They lived in their nests that they made inside of a mud wall. The mud walls were covered with hundreds of holes, each one leading to a nest. It's the best chance you have. If we can make it to the bee eater's wall, you can pop in a hole and then you will have been chased by thousands of bees. The bees won't go into the hole. They don't want to be eaten by bee eaters. Hogger took it all in and nodded, and he felt so lucky and grateful to have friends as clever and generous as Sanyu and Namizi. He hugged Sanyu again and waved goodbye as he knew he wouldn't see her once he left the plantation with Namizi. Sanyu made the sign of good luck and then she turned and disappeared into the tea plantation to wait for nightfall when she could return to her family. Nimizi knelt down low enough for Hogger to hop on her back. She could feel him trembling. I can run as fast as the wind, Hogger. If you get stung once or twice, you'll be okay. I will get you to the bee eater's wall before they can all attack you. Just hang tight when I run. And don't let go for anything. Hogger nodded in understanding, and they set off for the bee colony. As they stood just yards away from the bee colony, Namizi pointed out a beehive that was full of honey. That's the one, she murmured as she glanced at the sky. It was nearing high noon, and they didn't have much time left. Hogger hopped off Namizi and quietly walked over to the hive slid out his little butterfly net and scooped it up. And then he ran and hopped back on Namizi, who took off at the speed of light. He held the net tightly as they sped along. For the first few seconds, nothing happened. And then he heard it. A ferocious buzzing sound. Hogger glanced behind them and saw an enormous black cloud of angry bees swarming. They were being chased by over 10,000 bees. And Hogger dumped the beehive from his butterfly net, hoping that the angry bees would stop chasing them. He had accomplished his mission, but the bees didn't stop. They buzzed right over the abandoned beehive and headed straight for Hogger. He felt the first sting, but just held on tight to Namizi as the dark bee cloud drew closer. Then. He felt another sting. He looked straight ahead, and then he saw it, the mud wall with the bee eaters. The bee eaters heard them coming, and they turned in disbelief. They had never seen such a feast headed their way. They all flew out from their nests as Namizi and Hogger arrived at the foot of the wall. Go now, quickly, into a hole, cried out Namizi as she turned to leave. Hogger jumped off her back and ran to a hole as he cried out, Thank you. I will never forget you. And then he disappeared into a bee eater's hole and fell down, down, down until he landed on a soft cushion on his couch that felt like a marshmallow. Oh my, I have got to go tell Forgetta all about Namizi and Sonyu and the bees, he thought as he remembered having Coco with her. He set off to find Forgetta, 
but she was nowhere to be found. She was in the sea of red lotus. But that is a tale for another time. Hey there, it's Maria. Thanks for listening to Goop Tales. If you want to listen to another one, all you have to do is click on your screen and you can. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Goop Tales and you'll always be notified when there's a new one. You can tag us on social media at Goop Tales on either Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to hear your questions and comments. And you can also leave me a voicemail if you go to gooptales.com and use the little prompt in the sidebar. Okay, I will see you in the next Gooptale.